Scotland against Georgia this weekend, folks. Rugby World Cup warm-up games continue. Not many to go before the competition itself kicks off. Coaches, players still getting all their ducks in a row and trying to peak as the competition um, gets underway. We're going to go through the lineups, some recent history, some stats and predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one might be going to go. I say recent history between the sides. It's not that recent. I mean, 2020, they did play. 2019, they played. Um, so they have played, you know, in the last kind of five years. But then their oldest game goes back to 2011. I think they've only played each other five times. So Scotland have won them all. They've never been beaten by the Georgians. The average score has been 37-10. Um, the closest one is actually the oldest one in that 2011 World Cup where it was 15 points to 6. Like the more recent results, 48-7, 36-9, 44-10, and 43-16. So Scotland have tended to kind of put the Georgians to the sword. And Scotland are in pretty good form. But then so are the Georgians. So it's going to be a really interesting one to see how these teams go. Maybe more interesting for the likes of Wales and Fiji and Australia who've got Georgia in their pool. Because I feel like Ireland and uh, South Africa kind of already know that um, Scotland are here to play for that pool B. But anyway, uh, for the Scottish side, they have made a few changes from the side that played France a couple of weeks ago. Jamie Batty, Dave Cherry. And uh, WP, or via Pierre Nell, that's your front row. So Batty and Cherry are into the side after not playing in that game. But Nell continues on. Remember, Xander Fagus is still suspended. Sam Skinner comes up from the bench. And Grant Gilchrist is there uh, from outside the 23. So it's kind of a very much changed type 5. But in the back row is the same with Jamie Ritchie, Roy Darge, and Jack Dempsey. So Darge made 11 from 11 tackles in his game. And I still feel like he's putting himself ahead of Hamish Watson. But... Gregor Townsend made us hard to change that once the World Cup itself gets underway with the experience of Watson. Uh, Jamie Ritchie, good to see him get some more game time after kind of having had limited involvements with Scotland with injuries and whatnot, but he's been kind of eased back into the side, which is pleasing, and he seems to be at 100% now. Uh, Jack Dempsey, also with his big carries at number eight, will, um, you know, will certainly make his presence felt. But uh, yeah, maybe the front row battle against the Georgians is always one that gets talked about, although maybe the Georgian scrum hasn't been as dominant in kind of recent years as what we expect, but their backs have gotten a lot better. So it's going to be a bit of a trade-off. Uh, great to see Ben White back after picking up a knock in that first game. I think it was against the Italians, right? Um, you know, he's back fit, which is pleasing, and he's starting. Uh, he needs a bit more game time, and Finn Russell continues on at number 10. So they're not kind of pulling out all of the, the big guns and um, putting them in cotton wool. These guys need game time, and uh, Gregor Townsend's given it to them. Hugh Jones and Tupolotu continue their kind of uh, trademark relationship, the Hugh Pelotu one in the midfield, and uh, the outside backs do have them over Darcy Graham and Ollie Smith. So the absence of Kinghorn is maybe the only uh, absence that you would expect to see in the current starting back line for Scotland. Like I mentioned, the forward pack's much changed. But that back line is probably the back line we're going to see play against South Africa in that first game, I would imagine. Uh, good to see Darcy Graham back in. Although Kyle Stane was a pretty capable replacement in his absence the other week. Um, I mean, Duhan's got some big old carries in him, doesn't he? He's played so much game time for Scotland. He had seven against France in that losing effort. And um, yeah, even Finn Russell was able to bust a few tackles. So... Yeah, there's some, some danger in the Scottish back line for sure. Ashman comes in as your replacement hooker. Sutherland and Sebastian are there. A uh, bit of a spotlight on Javin Sebastian, how well he goes at set-piece time when he comes on. Scott Cummings is also there. Matt Fagerson is in on the bench. George Horn, Ben Healy, and Chris Harris. So Healy and Harris also in. Be nice to see Healy get 40 minutes if the Scots are ahead at halftime by more than a score. Why not give Ben Healy a bit of game time? But... Yeah, uh, the Georgians may have something to say about that. Speaking of the Georgians, and I apologize for any kind of horrendous pronunciation, um, they have made a few changes from the side that played the USA last week. They've got Nariashvili, Mukashvili, and Gigashvili as your front row. So the hooker, Shavla Mamukashvili, is getting his 100th cap, which is a phenomenal achievement because I'm sure the Georgians probably played fewer games than some of the Six Nations. I know they get the the kind of second tier European championship that the Georgians pretty much always win. But for a guy for a tier two team to get 100 caps at test level 
is a heck of an achievement. So I think it's going to be his third World Cup. So big congratulations to him. That is massive. Uh, Gigash really on the tight head comes in from outside the 23. Uh, Lachanidza and Mikhail Tadza are the locks. Mikhail Tadza is one of the kind of big unit veterans who I'm used to seeing whenever I see Georgia play, which is not that often. Uh, and then Chachinadze is up from the bench. The back row for Georgia is one that I'm a little bit less familiar with than normal. Uh, Avinash really at six. I don't remember his name. I'm not sure that I've seen him play. Then Gachi Chaladza and Jalagonia. Jalagonia is the one guy I do know for sure. I've seen him play for Georgia before. And I looked up his numbers and they were totally unsurprising from the game against the USA. Last week paid 22 out of 23 tackles. He is a, he is a phenomenal tackling machine. Uh, I believe Becca Gorgadza is still coming back from injury. So he's not quite yet available. Um... But yeah, I'll be keen to see how the two flankers go. Lobjanidze is kind of your veteran guy by this point at number nine. And then Matkava is a guy who I don't remember really seeing that much of Georgia prior. But I know he played the last two games of Georgia's campaign against the likes of USA and Romania. So he seems to be potentially one of the favorite guys to kind of open the playmaking options. I think he plays for Black Lion, uh, the Georgian kind of club team. And then midfield, Sharikadze and Tabladze. That's a bit more familiar. Sharikadze has been captain of Georgia for what seems like a... A pretty long time, pretty busy workhorse player. Uh, I expect to see a lot of tackles from him if they don't have that much ball. And then uh, Mobedadza and Tabutadza are on the wings. And then the star of the Georgian backline, Niniashvili, is there at fullback against the USA. He had 83 meters and a whopping 12 defenders beaten, which is pretty incredible. I mean, I know they're only playing the USA, but for a guy to get into double figures for defenders beaten uh, shows you what a danger man that guy is in the back line. Replacements-wise, they've kept the same three front row replacements. They've brought in uh, Jayanai and Mama Triashvili uh, as the other kind of forward replacements. Abjanadza and uh, Kevaladza dropped to the bench in the backs. But um, yeah, it seems relatively stable for the Georgian pack, who admittedly is uh, one that I don't see as much as I would like. Oh, what can I say? I wish they were playing more tier one teams. Stats wise for the Scots, they've got the highest ratio of tries scored by backs compared to forwards. Like most of the teams, like 60-40, 65-35. Um, the, the Scots are almost like 80-20 this year in terms of the tries that they've scored by their <laughs> their back so they do like unleashing that back line and they seem to have pretty good fitness as um, they score a lot of their points in the final 20 minutes do the scots and they're also fairly regularly scoring tries from kicks these days so uh, if you leave that space wide open the scots are certainly uh, happy to take that space i think in the last three games they've scored at least one try from a kick in each game and then for the georgians we always think the georgian forward pack but it's been their backs also scoring more tries uh, in the last couple of games, and their defense has been incredible, 90% plus their tackling percentage, admittedly only against USA and Romania, two teams kind of not that flash and not on the same level as Georgia, so Georgia will need to up that game, but if you're already tackling, tackling at 90% or 91 or 92 against those teams and you play a better side and you drop, hopefully the drop is not kind of too much, um, their set piece is also pretty reliable and they mauled it a lot against the USA 11 malls in that game so yeah it seems like a nice balance of the forwards and backs right now with the georgians um average score like i mentioned is 37 10 but that goes back over a decade more than a decade 2011 is a long time ago mark you, you're getting old if you think that's only a decade um bookies have got these scots winning this one by 22 points so saying it's going to be pretty comfortable and uh the rugby forecast algorithm says 19 so, yeah, the Scots are predicted to get the job done. I wouldn't say in a canter, but pretty easily. Uh, at Murray Field, it is a 5.30 local kickoff, which is 4.30 in the morning for those of us in New Zealand, which is not fantastic timing, but it's better than Fiji, England, which starts a couple of hours before that. Matthew Raynal, the Frenchman, is the ref. A lot of the, uh, the Georgian guys play their rugby in France so I would expect to see a bit of communication in French during that game uh, if you want rugby gear folks remember level rugby got a heap of rugby world cup gear on sale uh, check the link in the description if you want it they also have some of the more kind of obscure stuff not just the tier one teams they do have 
you know, the likes of a Chilean jersey, if you wanted to get your hands on that. They finally got Argentinian jerseys in stock, which have been really hard to come by. So, yeah, there you go, folks. You guys let us know your thoughts. How do you reckon the Scots and Georgians are going to go? Obviously, we hope for no cards, especially of the red variety and no injuries. But, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts. And um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.